Hello people, in this video, let us look at uh, the hepatitis A virus lab diagnosis first. Okay, first we will finish off hepatitis A virus uh, lab diagnosis, then we will move to hepatitis B. Okay, because hepatitis A virus lab diagnosis also they have asked in the exam. Here, you are going to do antibody detection, then antigen detection, then you will do virus isolation, same thing, right? So, let us look at antibody detection. So, you will detect antibodies against the HAV that is the hepatitis A virus. So, in the previous video what we have looked at first let us look at that also. So, we started off with hepatitis virus. We saw what hepatitis is, who causes them, then uh, what are the symptoms. Then we uh, looked at the difference between hepatitis A virus, B virus, C virus, D virus and E virus. We looked at their differences. Okay. A is uh, transmitted in fecal oral route. Correct. So, A is called as infectious hepatitis. It is an RNA virus. It is having icosahedral symmetry. It is having single stranded RNA. Right. Then, <clears throat> it is heat stable, acid stable. So, it is usually transmitted fecal oral route. The fulminant disease is actually rare. Then, uh, main thing here you have to focus is uh, the chronicity. There is no chronicity. It's only acute phase of uh, this, uh, infection will be there. There is no carrier status. Okay. Then, the prevalence of hepatitis A is high, especially in students who live in hostels or who are uh, consuming this kind of food which are prepared in mass. Uh, they may be susceptible to hepatitis A infection. The secondary attack rate is high. The prognosis is excellent. That is why these people will have only acute phase of disease. There is no chronic phase of disease. So, if these people who are living in hostel, if they want, they can take a vaccination against this hepatitis A. Okay. And um, also, if they are already exposed, they can also take an immunoglobulin, uh, hepatitis A virus immunoglobulins. Okay. So, that will give them um, the post-exposure prophylaxis. That is to prevent disease if they are already exposed to the virus. Therapy, there is actually no specific therapy mentioned because it's an acute and self-limiting condition. The prognosis is excellent, right? Our body can heal. So now, we are looking at the hepatitis A lab diagnosis. You know about hepatitis A, correct? So here what you want to do? You want to do antibody detection, antigen detection, virus isolation, very standard things, correct? So let us look at anti-HAV antibody detection. So standard, you know, the IgM antibodies appear during the acute phase. Then IgG will appear, correct? So IgM, they appear, um, they, their peak is about two weeks after the elevation of liver enzymes. So liver enzymes, main thing here, always you have to detect uh, the liver enzymes. If liver enzymes, ALT, AST, right? What is uh, ALT? Alanine aminotransferate, aspartate aminotransferate, right? So, ALT, AST. Alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase. So, <clears throat> now we are currently studying antibody, that is IgM, right? About IgM. Now, IgM antibodies appear during the acute phase. But there is only acute phase in hepatitis A. So, peak, they peak about two weeks after the elevation of liver enzymes. And then they disappear within 3 to 6 months. Then IgG, IgG antibodies appear a week after the appearance of IgM and persist for decades. This will be for decades it will be there. IgM they first appear right, they appear first. First antibodies to appear but they, are, they peak after the elevation of, they peak after the elevation of liver enzymes. Okay, and uh, two weeks after they peak off, they peak two weeks after the elevation of liver enzymes, and they disappear within three to six months. They last how many months? They last about three to six months. They disappear within three to six months. IgG will remain for decades. So. Interpretation is, if there is an IgM positive for anti-HAV antibody, that means to say that it is an acute infection. If the person has IgG antibody against this HAV, that means to say that there is a past infection or recovery. Okay. 
if there is igg and no igm it means to say past infection or recovery okay how will you detect these antibodies with elisa elisa is the method of choice however many rapid test formats are also available rapid tests are also available detection of hiv particles so this is more like detection of antigen only so here hiv appears in the stool because this is a fecal oral transmission correct this is a fecal oral transmission so in the stools you can detect hiv you can detect the virus in the stools hiv appears in stool from plus or minus 2 weeks of jaundice they can be detected from liver the bile the blood by immuno electro electron microscopy so you can detect this virus itself from the liver from the bile from the blood and the stool by immuno electron microscopy okay you can also detect in liver in bile in blood okay the stools can have hiv when you know plus or minus 2 weeks of jaundice so even 2 weeks before jaundice and 2 weeks after jaundice the person can stool can show hiv particles also you can detect the hiv by im, by you can also detect in liver bile and blood by immuno electron micro scope i i'm thinking it's going above your head right so just uh, pay attention here what we discussed so far you know we discussed antibody detection antibody detection you saw igm detection igg detection if there is igm then it is acute infection if there is igg in the absence of igm it means to say it's past infection or recovery then we saw hiv particles itself we can identify hiv particles in the stool you can identify two weeks before and after jaundice you can also detect these particles in the blood in the bile in the liver by by immune immuno electron microscopy okay so we are done with this much elisa and all remember to write okay then coming to hiv antigen detection elisa format is available to detect hiv antigen from stool sample from minus 2 to plus 2 weeks of jaundice same thing in stool you can detect antigen with elisa same thing minus 2 to plus 2 weeks of jaundice you can detect the hiv antigen is this clear then coming to isolation so the virus isolation that's what they are speaking about now the hepatitis a virus is very difficult to grow in a cell line okay so you cannot isolate it easily though various primate cell lines are susceptible hiv is the only hepatitis virus where isolation has been attempted oh they didn't attempt in anything else ha 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 and that also didn't work very difficult to grow okay in cell lines that's what they are saying here that's all you can write in the exam non specific findings non find specific findings will be elevated liver enzymes okay elevated liver enzymes bilirubin serum bilirubin levels right normal uh, it will be elevated right elevated elevated serum bilirubin levels do you know what's the normal level of bilirubin normal levels are actually for bilirubin 0.5 to 1.5 mg per deciliter greater than 2 mg per deciliter bilirubin will be termed as jaundice okay 
Do you know the normal levels of ALT and EST also? So now let's move on. <coughs> so this was the lab diagnosis of hepatitis A. You should know this. Just revise once what you have seen so far. So basically you will do antibody detection. Nothing new for you. Then you will detect the virus particles itself in the stools etc. Then you will do antigen detection using ELISA again. Isolation is very difficult. Non-specific findings you will do liver enzymes and you will check the serum bilirubin levels. Correct? So that's all in hepatitis A lab diagnosis. Next what we will do we will start off with hepatitis B. Hepatitis B uh, is very very important for the exam. So we need to focus more on hepatitis B. Okay. Come back for the next video where we will explain all these graphs etc.